Hello everyone and welcome back to another Python Quick Tips. In this video I'm going to be talking about the difference between equals equals and is and how this works in Python on a fundamental level. Now this is something that a lot of people, especially beginners in Python, don't know or don't understand. And if you consider yourself good at Python, I would definitely recommend watching this entire video because this is very valuable information that you definitely should know. That being said, I apologize it's a bit longer than usual, but I do need to kind of cover all of the concepts involved in this. So let's talk about equals equals versus is. Now the first example I want to show is x equals equals y. So we look at this example here, we see I have x equals 1, 2, y equals 1, 2. Clearly, these are the same. Running this should give us the value true. Okay, makes perfect sense. Now what happens when I change this to is? Well, what does is do versus equals equals? Some people might think it does the same thing. They might think it says, well, 1, 2 is definitely 1, 2. So that should be true. But you can see that after running this, I mean, I run it again we get the value false. That is because we are not comparing equality with these two objects, we are comparing the object itself. Now, believe it or not, even though these are the same value, they're stored in different locations in memory. And I can show you where these are actually stored in memory by using a function called ID. So I'm just gonna print out the ID of X, and I'm gonna print out the ID of Y. And I show you that although these objects are the exact same in terms of the value they store, they are actually different to our computer. You can see this is the memory location of X and this is the memory location of Y. I mean, relatively, but that's the way I'm going to explain it, okay? So you can see that what this actually does is compare the ID of X and the ID of Y. And if those are the same, it's going to give us true. Otherwise, it's going to give us false. Now, let me prove to you that this does actually work. So if I change y and make it equal to x, and now I do a comparison x is y and print this, you see we get true. That is because these objects are actually identical. They're the same object. And you can see the IDs here are the exact same. So that is kind of the main fundamental difference with is. But how do we actually use this properly, especially on our own objects? Well, this is where we get into some more complicated things um, and I'm going to be showing them right now. So let me just get rid of this example here. And now we're going to move into my custom example with my custom class dog. So based on what we just saw, in theory, Tim should really be equal to Joe because these equal signs compare well the value of our two objects. And in this case, our objects are pretty much the same. They have a name that's equal to Tim and they both have that. So if I run this, we should get the value true, right? But we don't. And the reason we don't is because on our own objects, we need to specify how we're going to compare them. Dog object here that we've created has no idea what it means for two dogs to be equal. Maybe they have an attribute aim, uh, age, maybe they have an attribute name, maybe they have a bunch of other features about them. What needs to be the same for us to say that this dog object is the same as another dog? Well, that's what we're going to specify by ourselves by implementing a method here called equals. So these are called dunder methods um, in Python. There's also some other names for them as well. But essentially what this allows us to do is overwrite standard basic functionality in Python. So it will allow us to actually use something like the two equal signs on our dogs. So let's show this. So if I just throw self in here and I throw other, what I can do is write a quick method here that will take this other dog that's going to be passed in and compare it to our dog and return true if they're the same and return false otherwise. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that this other dog that we're comparing it to is actually an instance of dog. So the way I do that is I use this is instance method like this. And this will tell me if this that I have here, this object is actually an instance of the class dog. Now, if that's true, what I'll do is I'll say if other dot name equals equals self dot name return true, essentially comparing the names of the two dogs and seeing if they're the same. So if they're the same, will it return true? Otherwise, we'll return false. So after doing this now, when I run my program, you see we actually get a value of true. Now, this is because when we implement this dunder equal sign method, what this allows us to do is use the two equal signs between our dogs and get an accurate value um, comparison. Now, this is again going to be different if I switch this to is. So if I say Tim is Joe, obviously we're going to get false because again, the ID of Tim is going to be different than the ID of Joe because although these objects are the same value wise, they have a different memory location. They are actually unique, different objects, and they could change their properties at any point in time. So that is kind of how the is versus equals equals work. Now, let's just show one more thing. If I do something like Joe equals Tim, 
Now, when I say Tim is Joe, we get the value true. Again, because what actually happens is Joe points to the same dog object that Tim points to. If you think about this kind of like in a pointer sense, um, where these variables really are just holding the memory location of whatever object you want. When you compare with is, you'll see if they're actually the exact same object. Now, sometimes this is useful because you need to know if you have, you know, the same object being passed in, or if you have an object that's equivalent value wise, but is its own unique object. So anyways, that is how this equals equals method works as well. You can implement this on any of your own objects. And this is what all of the built in standard data types have in Python. So for example, like an int data type of five has a built in method of double equal sign. So it has this underscore underscore equals underscore underscore, which allows you to do these equals equals. Now, I won't get into this in this video, because this will go much longer. But there is tons of other methods like this that you can implement. For example, you can implement a method like add, which will simply take, you know, we'll say self and some other object, and you can add or change the value or return a value based on that. So maybe we want to add two dogs together. And what we do when we do that is we simply return their names combined. So I could do something like other dot name plus this dot name. What am I saying this? I'm not typing in Java. Do self dot name. So now if we do something like that, and I say, you know, Joe equals, uh, oh, I'll have to actually make two dogs here. Otherwise, this won't work. Uh, okay, so let's do dog, Tim, Joe, and I print out the value of Tim plus Joe. We'll see that we get Joe Tim. So what we do is we add those names together in reverse order. So Joe Tim and return that. So we can do stuff like this in Python. And I just want to make this a quick tip video. Although it's not very quick, I feel like a lot of people don't know this and it's super powerful and you can do a lot with it. So anyways, that has been it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more complex Python stuff like this, let me know because I have a whole kind of list of things I'd like to share on the channel.